Distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends, uh, I'll share with you just a little story some month prior to this founding workshop here in Geneva, Christoph coming and starting to explain what he has in mind. A global network of ethicists, internet-based, hopefully developing with an electronic library. And he was just sharing his vision. And it was so wonderful to see and to listen to him. There was vision. There was commitment. There was capacity. There was skill. There was something exciting. And so it was clear that we as a World Council of Churches should be associated with this. Because it was clear that we could benefit from crossing boundaries beyond our own confinements through this kind of networking that is possible through Global Ethics Net and an international network of ethicists on a variety, variety of issues and concerns. We could benefit from that. And so clear, we wanted to be associated and we wanted to support. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned Evelyn Appiah, who can't be here, because I think that her contribution also was very important in the beginning to have the credibility, to have the, the worldwide uh, community of Protestant academies and others being involved in this. So thank you, Christoph, because without you, that would never have happened. I was personally thrilled by this idea because two years before, I had tried to look for young theologians in different regions of the world. You see, an older network like the World Council of Churches has the advantage that there are many friends. But many friends and networks of many friends can also become too narrow. So it is very important to have fresh voices, new people, young people involved. And so we were looking for young people, young theologians, other ethicists and others who could contribute to the work. And we suddenly realized that we had to go through our existing networks to reach them because they were not visible. We could not see them. And they had no access to the international level because their master thesis, their dissertations, their articles were not published by those who are the dominant forces in global publishing. For a theologian, if you have a book in Orbis or in Rutledge or whatever, there are few publishing houses, you know your name is on the global agenda. But what about these many young people who didn't have any access? And so it was very clear, these young people need to be seen. These young people need to be heard. These young people need to be recognized. We need tools. We need places where we can receive what they are doing and where we can get in touch with them. And this was this beautiful vision that came here, that there was a network that had the potential to open up, to grow, to cross boundaries, to be accessible to everyone, and to allow us to involve new voices and new people in this broader discussion. And this was what really inspired me. Because when we were trying to do this, we were working with small consultations, bringing 20, bringing 30 people locally together in one place, very expensive. And at the end, what is the efficiency of this kind of enterprise compared to the possibilities that were opened up through Globe Ethics Net? So that was the little thing what I wanted to share with you. So Christoph, take this opportunity to thank you. Take this opportunity to thank you also for the growth of Globe Ethics Net and the possibilities for the World Council of Churches to use the facilities of Globe Ethics Net for discussion groups, for developing publications, like some of our colleagues have done it, and especially also for this wonderful tool that developed more recently uh, thanks to the cooperation between you, Stephen Brown, my colleague Dietrich Werner, uh, Globe Theolib, the Global Theological Library. We have seen this growth and we are benefiting from it. I am benefiting from it. I have just consulted again yesterday Globe Theolib because I was looking for an article. So thanks a lot.